Hey guys, Brandon Johnson here again, and thanks for joining me. Today we're looking at that old-time classic fiddle tune, Whiskey Before Breakfast. It's one of those songs that I tend to warm up on a lot. There's a lot of, you know, cool note motion going on, a lot of modulation, especially in the B part. But this song is, of course, in the kind of the classic Norman Blake style. Now, I originally learned this song out of capo 2, which is in the key of D, but today we're going to learn it out of capo 3, which puts us into the key of E flat. And Norman Blake said he likes to play it with the capo on 3 because it projects better on a sound system. Of course, he was playing through a mic. These old school pickers, they never use pickups in their guitars. And I think it just gives it a really cool sound and a really cool tonality. So I hope you enjoy it and let's check it out. Okay, let's take a look at Whiskey Before Breakfast. So the melody for this song follows the C shape very closely. Also the F shape, which is here. We're playing this, this kind of an F shape as opposed to this. Or this. So we're just keeping it simple with our fingerings here. So we're playing over the open C shape. And we're starting with a hammer on on the D string and the G string. So we're picking the G and the D. And we're hammering on with our middle finger. Okay, and after that hammer on, we're going right into an open G on a downstroke. Okay, so that's a 16th note, that hammer on, so we're hammering on fairly quickly. And then a rest, and then the open G on a downstroke. Okay, and from there, we're going to the second fret D string. to open G again on a downstroke. It's gonna be rest, You can see how that follows the C shape really closely. So we're, this is all off the C, the open C chord position. Let's take a look at measure number one, start to finish. One, two, three, four. And you can kind of let those notes ring out too, because we're playing over the C chord, and you know all of these notes are in, are actually in the C chord, so you can let those notes ring out. You'll see there in measure number one, I have that hammer on, and the D string and the G string. However, you could play that with more of the chord included, so you could do more of like a... You don't have to just pick those two, those two strings. Although you can if you're playing more, if you're playing with, like, with another picker and you don't need to play the entire chord, you could play more of just the notes. If you're playing by yourself, for example, you might want to play more of the chord in that part. And that's just going to give you, you know, a little bit more volume, a little bit more, you know, a little bit more rhythm mixed in there if you're playing by yourself. And you can add in the chords too because you're you're playing so closely to these chord shapes that you can always just, you know, kind of strum more of the chord or less of the chord depending on the musical situation. All right, and that brings us into measure number 2. Okay, looking at measure number 2, we're going into the F chord shape now. And we're using this F chord shape. Okay, so we're coming out of the C and we're going to the F. It's a pretty easy move. You're just moving your fingers from the A and the D string to the D and the G string. What 
we're doing here is we're doing a little bit of cross picking. So we're, we're coming into this F chord shape. We're coming out of this. Going into F right there. So at the end of measure number one, you're going to see that open D to second fret D string. And then in the beginning of measure number two, you're going to see third fret D string, which is the first note of the F chord. Okay, we're doing a little bit of cross picking here. So we're starting on a downstroke and we're really just picking the first two notes of this F chord. So if you look at this as a triad that consists of these three notes, then we're really picking on just these two. Okay, so we're starting with a downstroke on the third fret D string. And then we're playing an upstroke on the second fret G string. We're doing this. So it's down, up, down, up. And then from there, we're going down to the C chord again. So if you look at measure number two, you see F, C, G for the rhythm part. And right when, we hit, right when we hit that C chord, so we're starting with the F, which is right here. And then right when that C chord comes, we're going down to the second fret D string with an open G. So it's the same picking pattern. It's the up, down, up, down on the D string and the G string. But now we're going down to the second fret D string and the open G. Okay, so it's... from there we're doing a slide up on the A string fifth fret. So you kind of have to get out of this this position right here. Take your middle finger, place it on the second fret A string, and you're going to slide up to the fifth fret. So you're doing a down stroke on the A string followed by an up stroke on the open D. Okay, and then after that, since you're hitting that upstroke on that open D, we're going to hit it with a downstroke, another downstroke. So it's going to be... Okay, so there's a lot of movement here. So you're going, you're doing a slide up to the fifth fret. Let's look at measure number two, start to finish. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm sure you can probably hear that that's the start of another walk up that goes into the next measure. That's going to get us back into the C position for measure number three. And that C note is the beginning of measure number three. All right, now let's look at measures one and two together, start to finish. There's a lot of walk-ups going on that go into the next measure. So we want to make sure that these transitions are nice and smooth. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four.
Okay, now looking at measure number three, we're back in the C position. And remember, coming out of measure number two, we're starting a walk up. That's going to land on that C note. It's not actually a C note, it's actually an E flat note, but since we're capoed three, it's going to land at that C, and that's going to start our third measure. So the third measure starts with a little walk up in the C position. It's going to end on that open G. So there's a little bit of a repeated phrase there at the end of measure number three. That's the same phrase as in the end of measure number one. And as you can tell, that's another walk up into the next measure. Okay, so we're starting with what is kind of the C major scale. So it's like... there, those notes. A little bit of an upstroke on that D string second fret. Okay, so we're sticking really closely to the C chord in the C major scale. So if you notice there, right after we come out of that open G on the downstroke, we're playing an eighth note on an upstroke on the second fret D string. So we're holding on that note just slightly longer than the others. All the other notes are 16th notes. All right, now let's look at measure number three, start to finish. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, now let's look at measures number two and three together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and looking at measure number four, this like starts off of the, the F major chord position, right here. So we're starting with a downstroke on the third fret D string, which is the first note of the F chord. Okay, and that's, that's almost an F major arpeggio right there. But that's right in the F, F major chord shape, in the F major scale.
we're going back down. So we're going up the F major scale and then back down right on top of that F major chord shape. Okay, so we're basically playing the F major chord shape in reverse. Now let's look at measure number four, start to finish. One, two, three, four. And you can see that I get back into that C chord position, even though I don't pick any of these notes, I'm just picking this note. It just puts me in a good position to go back into measure number one after measure number four because we have a repeat sign, which means we play all of measures one through four twice. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, now let's take a look at measures three and four together, focusing on keeping the transition nice and smooth, and also the walk up that starts at the end of measure number three and continues on in the beginning of measure number four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Alright, now let's take a look at all of part A, so that's measures 1 through 4, all the way through, and work on trying to keep each measure connected, so it sounds like one big measure. 1, 2, 3, 4. One, two, three, four. 